ADR, lovely to see you here at Canterbury. Uh, thankfully it's not raining uh, ahead, of your, ahead of your T20 game. Um, I'm going to take you back if I may. I'm going to take you a long way back. When, when did you first pick up a bat at a ball and think, oh, I quite like this game? Um, I don't think I thought whether I liked it or not. I think I was about three or four. My dad's from Yorkshire, avid cricket cricketer and I live next to a cricket ground so I think of whatever age um, that he could have put a bat in my hand and played in the garden with me I think as soon as that happened I was just away I don't think I stopped from then so yeah it was my dad which, which club was that? <laughs> uh, I live next to Tamish Wells Cricket okay. so Neville Cricket Fantastic. Ground Fantastic, yeah, gorgeous it's not, ground It's not too shabby is no, it? It's, it's quite lovely. a nice place to live Absolutely yeah. and so um, influences then your dad obviously yeah, um, it, was, was, was he? Did he push you, or was it just uh, you get out there and enjoy it? Um, I think it was probably a little bit of both. He didn't necessarily push me, but he was a person that I'd probably go to nets with all the time. Like he played, and he'd never let me get him out. And then as soon as I did, it was like the best day of my life. Um, but yeah, so he was always playing, so I'd I'd, I'd just go to the nets with him, and then yeah, I joined the boys section at Tunbridge Wells when I was probably about nine or ten or eight nine ten yeah. and how, how important was that joining the because obviously even since then cricket's changed women's cricket has changed so much but but how important was that you going into the Tunbridge Wells club and, and playing with the boys at that stage I think it was pretty like massive like I go around now and they've got a whole so there's two pitches at Tunbridge Wells and I'll, like, one of them's taken up solely by the girls whereas I was literally the only one and I remember the first summer, I walked around with my dad and he was just like, we we're trying to gauge what it was like. And I was like, no, I can't do this yet. And then the next year I was like, yeah, let's go. Um, yeah, and I think it was massive. Just like, I think they just accepted me. I was like the only one there and I just got involved in it. But yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Because as I say, it's it's changed so much now, hasn't it? In the, I've got an 11 year old daughter and she's playing club cricket for an all, all girls team. But, but back then that wasn't the case, was it? So it must've been quite, is intimidating the right word to, to wander in or as you say you had to wander around the ground and had a look first and then thought right let's let's give this a go so you said yeah. they were really welcoming when you came first first up yeah really welcoming um i didn't know of girls like clubs then i mean i like now know there was one five minutes down the road the other way um but i obviously lived next to tumbridge Wells, and they didn't have a girls section um so yeah i guess it was probably a bit intimidating and you had a point to prove so I just remember being from whatever age, like having that point to prove and being like, well, if you're doing that, then I can do that. And kind of just trying to keep up with whatever's going on or just joining in with whatever. It's, it wasn't a me or them. It was just, I'm going to do exactly what like you do as well. And I can remember, because I grew up, I can remember Tunbridge Wells being a terrific club. Obviously, Neville Grounds are a terrific ground as well. but. You know what they've done for you in your career and your cricket that is huge isn't it and it is a fantastic club for yeah it's a really good club i mean i think they're still in the prem for the kent kent prem um and they're doing pretty well um yeah it's a massive like stepping stone for me and i was there until i was about 15 and i still occasionally go around and if i have a chance which i don't <laughs> that much play for one of the teams there on a saturday or sunday um but yeah they were massive in my, my development and just getting involved with the boys section and growing up and then what happened because obviously development pathway screams kent england mm. now south east stars so so from from that but when did you begin to think oh hang on actually i'm quite good at this and, and this this is something i would like to like to pursue um, me personally, I wasn't really like aware of like county cricket or women's cricket that much growing up. I guess because I was probably in the bubble of like Tunbridge Wells and the stuff. And then I kind of thought, oh, maybe this is what something I want to give a go. Um, I had a friend that played in the Sussex team and kind of thought, oh, maybe. So I ended up joining a club down the road called Belgian Green, who's got like an incredible women's section, girls section there. Um, joined there when I was about 14, 15 and then from there went into the Kent set up like age group stuff. So yeah, I didn't actually play girls or women's cricket till I was about 14, 15. Um, but yeah, so like the set up from there, so like Belgian Green had a fantastic set up, like slotted right into their team and then went into the Kent and then just kind of 
work my way up from there. Yeah, because people would be interested by that, that, that sort of pathway through. What, what was it like when you got into the Kent setup as well? Because obviously that's the next step up, isn't it? Yeah, I remember having um, trials at NET and everyone knew each other and I knew no one <laughs> just because they had all played like club stuff together and I hadn't played any of it. Um, but yeah, so we'd have like trials in the winter and then you'd have training during the winter and then there was games um, throughout the summer and that's kind of what I remember of the setup was the training sessions. I think it was a weekend. I think there's more now than there were. It used to be just one on a Sunday afternoon for a couple of hours. And then, yes, and then it was um, summer games. And, and how proud are you, were you, of playing for Kent? Because, you know, you, you, Tunbridge Wells, one of the biggest clubs in Kent, you've worked your way through there, and then you're playing for the county. How, how proud were you of that first time you played for them, and how proud are you to, to, to play for Kent? I'm still massively proud to play for Kent. Um, always brings a smile on my face when I actually get to get go out there with the girls. Um, I think as a county we're quite proud and we definitely we call ourselves the authors but we like play for each other, we play for that team um, and I was really proud to play for that team, especially like first coming in, the names that were there, so you had like Charlotte Edwards, Lydia Great Greenway, I could go on, like Tammy Beaumont, it just kind of went on and to get involved in that team was just incredible and you're just there like the first time I don't think I was really aware of it that much and then when you look back on it you're like oh okay that, yeah did all right there it's um, interesting that did, did you spend a bit of time with those three names you've just mentioned and especially Charlotte and Lydia with the you know the amount of experience those two had and have got did you spend time with them sort of just chatting with them about careers and picking their brains and finding out a bit more about what it takes to, to, to go into a professional game. Really. Um, I think one of the best things about cricket is that you can sit all day watching everyone else play and just watch how they go about things or you have conversations on the sides. I wouldn't say I necessarily went out of my way to have this sort of conversation yeah, yeah, with yeah. any of them. I mean, I spent a lot of time with Tammy over the years and yeah. just talking and going over things. I mean, she's used me as a um, bouncing board. I've used her God knows how many times as a bouncing board as well. Um, yeah, and you just watch and see how they go about things and you learn that way and just how Lottie would um, speak to the group as captain and how she would, what she would ask of us or say how she wants us to play or lead by example, go out there and do what she needed to do. Um, yeah, I got to just watch and learn for however many years. Yeah, soaking, soaking it all yeah. up, which is obviously your role now with the South East Stars. Um, I, I think it's absolutely good. I thought last year was brilliant, uh, so far this year's been brilliant. H how is it being in the setup? Because obviously, you mentioned Kent there, you've got Surrey, you guys are going head to head, aren't you? You're trying to, trying to take each other's wickets, you're trying to smash each other all over the park, and then all of a sudden, you're coming together yeah. and you're playing as a team. How's that experience been? I've loved it yeah. so far. I mean, I really enjoyed the first couple of T20s at the start. So we're having a lot of um, chirp over the winter of Cyrus saying that they're the better team and then put that to bed pretty quickly in those first two games. Um, but yeah, I think we really enjoy it. We really enjoy the competitive side of it. So as soon as we get a competitive game out and training, competitive like, side switches on. Um, and then us coming together, I think we all get on really well. And I'm one of the older ones at 27, which is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, being able to like just oversee it, see it, like help anyone out that you possibly can, and just see the two groups come together, I think we gel really and, and, well. And how important has the contract been? And how important has it been that you are now treated like professionals, which you always should have been, but you are now, and you're getting full-time coaches, and you're training in the winter. How how important is that, not just for you, but for, for, for every living cricketer across the land? I mean, personally, for me, it's like vitally important. It's like it's my job, it's my wage. Um, but for everyone else, I think that's like it's massive. It protects their time. It protects like their bodies, like the physical side of things. Not just going out there and absolutely smashing themselves. Like we've got physio, we've got SNC, we've got the mental support, we've got we get, like coaches as well. So just being able to take their game up from this level and being able to just take it up to a different level is so nice to like watch and see them progress and like actually 
grow into that tetraid more than they yeah, possibly I, could have. I have a question. Yeah. It, was, was it always the aim for you? Because as you say, it's now your job. Yeah. It's now your job. Was that always the... Did you always think to yourself, I would like it, I'd like this, I'd like this to be my job, I'd like to be doing this full-time, professionally, day in, day out, week in, week out? Um, I think growing up, whenever anybody asked me what I wanted to do for a living, I thought, I don't know, I just want to play cricket. Yeah. Flirted with other ideas and all that sort of stuff. I mean, it hasn't necessarily been straightforward. So I went to uni, which was insane and wonderful. Went on to Australia, did a season there, and then didn't just got like ha hasn't just been plain sailing like I've had to have other jobs on the side and then as soon as I got a contract I've held on to a contract um, but yeah I didn't envision myself doing much else and haven't quite worked out what else I'll do after cricket either. Ah, you've got so much time ahead so of you I wouldn't worry about that yet. <laughs> um, final question is yeah. you mentioned your dad there yeah. but influences to get we sit here at Canterbury so you're at home um, you've got a game here today um, so, who are the people who've got you here? Who, who, who's yeah. helped to get you to this to this yeah. point in your career? Oh, well, I mean, you've got families I always around. I think I left stuff in there and then lost it. Massive one. They've been a massive support over the years. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, friends that have been forgiving for when you go, oh, sorry, I can't have got cricket. Oh, sorry, I can't have got cricket. And then coaches, so many to name. But the one that probably has made the largest difference is someone that actually coaches Ken at Kent. So he coaches Kent too now. Um, a man called Mark Decker, he was the first person I'd probably had cricket conversations with. So we'd bat, he would throw balls, we'd hit about 10, talk for however long, hit another 10, talk for however long. He was the first person I actually properly spoke about it. So yeah, he was Kent through and through. So yeah, Mark Decker's the one. That's it. That's all we need. Thank you. Beautiful. That was lovely. Thank you very much. That's all right. It's easy peasy. Plenty there, isn't it? Yeah. Better turn it off now. <laughs> well done, Letty.